Head coach Mike Littlewood is back on True Blue tonight. Coach, welcome to your second year. It's good to have you here. Thanks for having me, Dave. Appreciate it. It's hard to believe it's baseball season already, but your season is well underway and most of it's been out on the road. I'll tell you what, uh, we played four games at home and uh, 16 on the road, and it's been a, it's been a tough go, but uh, we, we uh, I think 26 of our first 30 games are on the road, and uh, when we get back home, it's going to be nice. I'll tell you what, sleep in our own beds. A couple of big moments already. You go back to that Utah game in your home opener. I'm checking the score, and it's 18 to nothing after the second inning. You beat them 20 to 3. I'm not even sure how that happens at this level of baseball. It was crazy. Uh, you know, I said on the radio after, after that game, we caught them on the right night. Uh, that was an anomaly. It's not going to happen again. And uh, they'll probably never play that bad again while Coach Kinnenberg's there. It was just one of those nights. I mean, Brett Lopez got a check swing and got a hit off the off the end of the bat that went to first base and just nobody went after the ball and he ran to first. I mean, it was that kind of a night that everything was going for us and nothing going for them. But it was Utah, so it was kind of nice to get that one. <laughs> yeah, on a year where BYU teams have not beaten Utah yeah. very many times, 20-3 yeah. to three in that one. And then you go to Nichols State, and, uh, and a sophomore pitcher back from his mission gives you a no-hitter. Unbelievable night. Colton Mahoney uh, made, made uh, the number three play on Sports Center that night, so we were all pretty excited about that. But he, Colton's a, Colton was a closer his freshman year, 93, 95 mile on fastball, but at Nicholas State, really tough conditions. The wind was blowing dead out. Um, it, was, it was really cold, but he just persevered. His fastball was 91, 93, and he was throwing his uh, change up and curveball for strikes. It was a fun, special night. And I'll tell you what, we got in the ninth inning, and it was uh, pretty silent in that dugout, you know, keeping our fingers crossed for him. Just the seventh no-hitter in school history, and uh, were you sweating it out? You know, I don't, I don't, I was looking at the scoreboard, the 5-0, so I was looking at the score more than I was the no-hitter, <laughs> but I was sure pulling for him to get that no-hitter, because it's, in 20 years, I've, uh, I've coached maybe, this is the second no-hitter and, and one perfect game at Dixie, and so they're, they're really few and far between, and it was a special night. You got another big moment coming up later this week. You go to uh, San Francisco, take on the Dons in a series there in conference play, but the Saturday game is over at AT&T Park where the Giants, the real Giants, yeah. San Francisco yeah. Giants play, where Barry Bonds did all his stuff, and, and you get a manage right out of that dugout. It's going to be special. We've, we've had a chance to play at some, some pretty neat parks already this year. This is going to be uh, uh, icing on the cake for sure. You know, the, the biggest thing for us, though, is it's still 90 feet between bases and, and 127 from home to, to uh, second base. I mean, th those are the things that I don't think our guys will get really wide-eyed about it, but it's going to be really exciting to play at that, that venue. Is Kelton Caldwell capable of putting one out in McCovey Cove? Yeah, he, he definitely can. He'll run into one once in a while. He can, <laughs> he can hit it as far as anybody, probably not as far as Bonds can hit it, but um, my hope is that he doesn't try to do that, <laughs> that he just uses the whole field and not try to pull one into the water. That'll be a lot of fun. Who in this conference uh, are you concerned with the most? Well, we just, you know, we just got rid of them, San Diego. San Diego. Um, best team we played this year, just a great team. But, but really, as we try to make one of the, the top four spots in the conference tournament, we're worried about every team. Uh, Gonzaga just went to San Francisco, who is a, San Francisco is a, a really good team. They have a, a bunch of returners and beat them three times. And Gonzaga had, had a record similar to us. Um, so San Francisco is beatable, but they are a tough team, especially at home. Uh, Loyola is going to be really good. Pepperdine is going to be really good. And the St. Mary's and the Portland's and, and Pacifics, those are teams that we're going to really have to battle with and win those series, if not sweep a couple of those series to, to get that, uh, earn that fourth spot to, to make the tournament bid. As a former basketball referee, do you miss the, this time of year with all the tournament games? Uh, it's an exciting time of year. We talked about it uh, just a minute ago. My last game I refereed was Louisville, Michigan State. Louisville beat them a couple years ago and yeah. just got a basketball signed by both coaches, Patino and, and Izzo. So it was, it's a special thing. I don't miss refereeing. I don't miss the travel. Uh, but I, I do miss this, the feel that you get this time of year. My first Sweet 16, I didn't even think I could blow the whistle. I think it was Florida. <laughs> the uh, coaches probably yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, I was that. like, uh. <laughs> and so, it, you know, just one of those, it's a, one of those special things in life. It's a fun time of year. But I, uh, I'll watch it on TV with the same excitement. All right, Coach. We'll see you at the ballpark. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate Mike it. Mike Littlewood in his second season at BYU. <laughs>